Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Reading for Vocabulary. I'm Brian Stewart. We're continuing our subject of animals. We're on lesson two. Lesson two, the title is Smart as a Chimp. So, smart as a chimp, a chimp is a chimpanzee. We're going to focus on chimpanzees are very smart animals. Of course, a chimpanzee is this animal here. We'll look at that word later on. And that, of course, brings us to our vocabulary. Okay, and then our first word is very funny word, right? What's going on here? Right? Kanjiropida, right? That's what you say. <sighs> to make someone laugh by touching them. Touching them, not just touching them, right? But by touching them like this, especially on the bottom of their feet. <laughs> What's going on? Tickle. To tickle somebody. <laughs> I'm going to tickle you, right? So if you see these feet, you can say, haha, I'm going to tickle. I'm going to tickle you. So you see somebody's feet, you go, hee hee hee, I'm going to tickle you, right? Okay. And you tickle somebody, you make them laugh. Okay. Next one. To stick to something. Of course, to stick to something, especially to hold on to something, right? These, these uh, kids are holding on to the tree. They're sticking to the tree, especially the one on the bottom. The, the kid on the top just sitting on the tree. But the, the child on the bottom, what's going on? Cling. Uh, the child is clinging to the tree, to hold on to, to stick to something, to cling to something. So we have cling, clung, clung. Because cling is an irregular verb. It changes form for the past tense. Cling, clung, clung. Cling, clung, clung. Okay, next word. Whoa, this looks very dangerous. Especially, I'm worried about his neck. Ooh, very dangerous. To fight by grabbing and throwing. So when you grab somebody and you throw them or you hold them down, you try to push them down on the floor, what type of fighting are they doing? There's lots of different fighting, right? There's martial arts like taekwondo, right? There's punching like boxing. What are these guys doing? They are wrestling. To wrestle. Wrestle. That's a little dip, bit of a difficult word. You have W-R, R, R, wrestle. And it's T-L-E. You don't say T-L-E, right? You say wrestle, wrestle. It's like you don't even pronounce the T. Wrestle. The T is silent. But they are wrestling. And yeah, they got to be careful. That looks very dangerous. Okay. Four. Very smart. Well, he's, I want to tickle his feet, right? Oh, okay, just kidding. Okay. But he's very smart. Maybe he read all these books. I don't know. But somebody who's very smart, we say they are intelligent. Whew, really long word. If you can say that word, then you are intelligent, right? Intelligent. 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 Somebody who's intelligent, they're very smart. But be careful. Intelligent is really ability. Ability. If you are intelligent, it means you are able to learn quickly. And of course, that's you have smarts. You have uh, you are smart and you are able to learn things quickly. I hope so, right? Because studying can be hard. But if you're intelligent, you can study quickly and learn things quickly. Next one. Having lots of hair. So if something has a lot of hair, we say it's furry. Now, we may have learned this word before, fur. Fur is just a lot of hair on a, on a body of, you know, an animal. Uh, animals have fur. So they have a lot of fur. If they have a lot of fur, then you can say, you can make it an adjective. This is an adjective, right? Adjective, furry. He has fur. Fur is a noun. Make it an adjective. It becomes furry. So my dog is very furry. A bear is very furry. Okay, furry. I'm not furry. I hope not. <laughs> no, I just have a, maybe hair in my, in my arms, but I'm not furry. People aren't furry. Animals are furry. Okay. Oh, what's going on here? This is a big subak. No, it's not watermelon. It's somebody's stomach, right? Lower stomach. What else do we call it? 
Peco, by the way, just had to say that, okay? <laughs> we say it's belly. And I said, Peco, right? Peco is right here, right? Looks like a little eye is looking at the boy. But Peco, in English, we say belly button. So we use that word belly, belly. Belly is kind of a casual word. Uh, you know, kids use it, belly. Uh, stomach is more of a formal word. Doctors will use stomach. Parents will use stomach. But, you know, if you're speaking casually with your friends, uh, belly. So, uh, you know, belly, like a big belly, like me, right? Okay. Okay, so belly. And this, of course, everybody has a belly button. You have a belly button. That's what we call it there. Belly, when we use it in the plural, we change Y to I and ES at the end. Bellies. Right? So if many people, you're talking about many people, they have many bellies. Okay? Belly. Okay. A small stick. If we're looking at a small stick, a very small stick, maybe this long, maybe this long, it's very thin, we can say that it is a twig. A twig is another word for a small stick. English is very descriptive, isn't it? We have a lot of specific words for very uh, unique or very special types of things. Stick is like an umbrella word. You know, you can have long sticks, short sticks, you know, thick sticks, thin sticks. But a twig is a special kind of stick. It means short and thin. It's a twig. You can hold it easily. What is this guy doing? Is he crazy? <laughs> okay. What is he yelling at his golf club? Uh, a feeling he has strong emotions. Maybe he's very upset because he hit the ball and it went the wrong way. So instead of thinking, oh, I made a mistake, he blames his golf club. He's very, he has a very strong emotion towards his golf club. But remember, emotions aren't just negative. Emotions can be positive too. Happiness is an emotion. If you're really, really happy, that's an emotion. If you're really, really sad, that's also an emotion. There are many kinds of emotions. Emotions can be positive and they can be negative. So emotion isn't a positive or negative word. It just means all of those emotions. It's like an umbrella word for that. Okay. Oh, look at this chimp. He's dancing, right? The cool chimp. <laughs> okay. An animal that looks like a monkey. I just said the word. It's a chimpanzee. Now, notice that at the beginning of the lesson, it said smart as a chimp because chimpanzee, which is the whole name, is a lot of times people will shorten it and just say chimp, right? I went to see a chimp at the zoo. Chimps are very smart. So we can say chimpanzee, chimpanzee, or we can just say chimp. It means the same thing. It's an animal that looks like a monkey. Actually, it is a monkey. It's a type of monkey. Okay. Ten, thinking much or thinking a lot about what you are doing. When you're thinking a lot about what you're doing, you are being very careful, right? You're being very careful. This person's being very careful looking at the bugs, right? When you think a lot about what you're doing, you do it carefully. You should think a lot about the things you are doing. Do things carefully. Some things you don't have to think a lot about, like, you know, you know, uh, well, brushing your teeth, you have to do it carefully. Think about how you brush your teeth. But sometimes we don't do things very carefully. We don't think about them because it's habit or we do them many times. But if we do something and we think about it very deeply, then we're doing it carefully. Okay. Eleven. Oh, that's a sad situation. Pain in the stomach. Ah, oh, pay up by all, right? Oh, money, pay up by all. What do we call that? You say, I have, whoa, that's such a long word. It gives me a headache to think about it. <laughs> okay. Stomach ache. And notice I just said headache. Now, there's a lot of aches that you can have. There are a lot of aches. You can have a headache, right? You can have a, a stomach ache. You can have a backache. So we use ache 
for, with different parts of the body, right, to say that they hurt. Not always, right? Don't say I have a nose ache. That doesn't work, right? It's usually headache, backache. You could have a toothache. 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 It's one word. I'm just showing the difference. And stomach ache, right? Those are commonly the words we use with ache. Don't say have an elbow ache or an arm ache. Eh, that's weird. You could say I have an ache in my arm. I have an ache in my elbow. Or you could probably just say my ache hurts. It hurts. My arm hurts. My elbow hurts. My tooth hurts. Hurts. Do not say, my tooth is sick. That's crazy, right? Let's say if you're walking along, bang, ow, your thumb, you bang your thumb against a table. Oh, up by oh, right? Don't say, oh, my thumb is sick. Huh? Your thumb is sick? Achoo, achoo. Oh, poor thumb. Go to bed and drink some orange juice. That's crazy, right? You can't say that. You only use sick with your whole body. I am sick. Susan is sick. If you're sick, it means you have a disease. You have a cold. You should go to bed, drink hot liquids, take some medicine. That's not what this is going on. You don't say my stomach is sick. Oh, poor stomach, go to bed. No, you say I have a stomach ache or my stomach hurts. Don't say my stomach is sick. That's isangheo. Only people can be sick. Now, notice we say stomach ache before we learned belly. So you can also say belly ache, right? I have a belly ache or my belly hurts, right? Pain in the stomach, pain in the belly, belly ache, or most people will say stomach ache. Whew. Okay, so one word. A lot of interesting things about that word. It's a good word, a useful word. Remember to say these or say my momo hurts. My momo? What's a momo? Oh, my whatever. <laughs> right? My arm hurts. My ear hurts. My head hurts. My leg hurts. My thumb hurts. Okay? So interesting word. Okay, next one. Oh, that's very cute, isn't it? These sisters, maybe they're sisters, they love each other, right? So what are they doing? They hold closely with the arms. When you hold something closely with your arms because you love it, like your brother, your sister, or your puppy dog, right? What are you doing? You are hugging it. To hug. You hug something. You hold closely with your arms. You show somebody that you love them. You hug them. Okay. Next one. Whoa. I know him. He's a famous director. Okay. Anyway. To make a sound that shows you are pleased. Now, it looks like these guys are talking, and what is he doing? He's going, ha, 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 right? He's pleased. He is laughing. I have kind of a strange laugh, huh? I'm sorry. But, you know, some people have a very deep laugh. Ho, 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 ho. Some people have a little laugh. He, 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 right? So there's many kinds of laughs, but we call them a laugh. We call that action to laugh. To make a sound that shows you are pleased, or you are happy, or something is funny, then you laugh. Okay, next one. Cleaning. It's time to clean. To press your hand on something and move back and forth. Press your hand on the glass and move back and forth. What are you doing? You are rubbing. Now, rub doesn't always mean somebody's cleaning. Right? If somebody's arm hurts, you can rub it. Maybe it will feel better. But be careful. Why does it hurt? If there's a nail sticking in their arm, don't rub it. Right? <laughs> but if they've been exercising, then you can rub it. Right? So rub just means to put your hand or your fingers on a surface and move back and forth right? with pressure to rub something. Okay. Of course, when you clean things, you have to rub them well. Okay. Oh, are you hungry? We have something here to eat. A dry fruit with a hard shell. So the outside part, right? The outside part is the shell. The inside part, this part here, is the dry fruit. And what do we call the whole thing? What do we call all of it? We call it a nut. A nut. This looks like a walnut. 
and of course you know about a peanut, right? There are many kinds of nuts. A nut. By the way, it's interesting in English.、Uh, be careful using nut, right? Nut is a food, but you can also call people a nut. If you say he's a nut, it means he's kind of crazy, <laughs> right?、Uh, he's kind of crazy. He's a nut, or you're a nut. Sometimes people will joke around, and you call your friend, "Oh, you're so you're so silly. You're a nut," right? That's sometimes people will call other people a nut, but that's just you know、um, you know a different meaning. This, of course, is food. It's a nut. Nuts are good for you. Okay, next one. Oh, these are not good for you, but they taste great. How do they taste? They are very delicious. So how do they taste? In Korean, you might say "yum." Oh, got it. Oh, don't forget that one. So you say "yum." How's my spelling? Is it okay? Yeah. Whoa. No.、Oh, what am I doing? What is that? <laughs> yum. See, yum, 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 yum. Mmm, masta. Right. <laughs> Very delicious. In English, it sounds similar to this. Sounds a little bit similar. Yummy. Yummy. Mmm. It's yummy in my belly. <laughs> right. Yummy in my stomach. It's yummy. Tastes very good, isn't that interesting? In English, we say yummy. In Korean, you say yum 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 yum.、Mm, very good. It's also very interesting to think about the opposite, pandero. Pandero in English, right? I'm going to use this symbol for pandero. We can say if something mashi opso, oh mashi ah yuck, mashi opso yo, right? We say yucky. Oops, c, y u c k y, yucky. Let me write that again. I'm getting too fast. There we go. That's much better. Yucky. Ooh, yucky. Ah,、oh, my shoes are all right. In Korean, you say yucky wa. Is that amazing? Yummy. Yum 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 yum. Yucky. Ooh, yucky wa. Well, it's it's like English and Korean are almost the same. <laughs> okay. It's very interesting that we have similar sounds for similar、uh, meanings in this case. Okay. Okay, we've come to our exercise, vocabulary exercise. Now, in this case, on page 19 in your book, you have a crossword puzzle. It's a puzzle. We call it a crossword puzzle. A crossword puzzle on page 19. These are the words that you have to put in your crossword. In a crossword, because you have some words that go down and you have some words that go across, so it's cross. Crossword. Across means this way. So you have,、uh, we have different、uh, answers for the words that go across, and we have different answers for the words that go down. So first, we'll do across. Across. Number two. Nice picture. We can see the picture. What's going on there, right? What is this picture、uh, representing? These are the words that we have. Let's go over the words. First one is tickle, tickle. Next one. Cling, cling. Next one is twig, twig. Wrestle is the next one. Wrestle. Emotion, emotion. Next one is intelligent, intelligent. Then we have belly, right? Belly, and furry, furry. Okay, so these are the words we have, and we have to fit them into the puzzle. Now, as I said before, we look at the picture, and we can see which word we can match with the picture. What's going on here? Remember, kanjiro pizza, pizza. Sorry, kanjiro pizza. My pronunciation not so good. Okay, if you do this, you are doing what? You are tickling somebody to tickle. <laughs> All right, I'm going to tickle you. So you tickle somebody. Okay, next one. Also across number five, he is a good student and very what? So he's a good student. If he's a good student, what is he? He learns quickly, right? He has the ability to learn quickly, and it's a very long word. So what word is it? Of course, here's a long word, but it's also the word that matches this sentence. He is a good student and very intelligent. Very intelligent. Okay. 
Next one. Seven across. A chimpanzee can do what? What can a chimpanzee do? And of course, we're looking for one, two, three, four, five letters. Okay, so what can a chimpanzee do? Can a chimpanzee, what do they do? They usually cling. They can cling, stick to trees. They can cling to trees. Okay, next one. Eight across. My dog is cute and what? Think about your dog. Look at your dog. If you have a dog, it's a very cute dog, right? There's hair all over your dog's body. So that hair we call fur. That's a noun. Now we want to change it to an adjective. So we say my dog is cute. That's one adjective. And the other adjective is yogita. Furry, right? Furry. My dog is cute and furry. Has a lot of hair. Next one. Now we're going down. One down. Here we have the picture. Again, I always feel a little afraid for this guy. <laughs> He's going to hurt his neck. Okay, what's going on here? These guys are fighting. What's happening? They are wrestling. Wrestle. To wrestle. This is to wrestle. Remember, there's many kinds of fighting for sport, right? Don't do this <laughs> because you have a strong emotion. Do this only if it's a sport, okay? Wrestling, taekwondo, boxing, whatever. Okay, next one, down. Oh, what's going on here? I just used that word, right? Don't wrestle or fight somebody because of what? Because of emotion, right? He's showing strong emotion towards his golf club, emotion. Next one, four down. The chimpanzee has a big round what? What does the chimpanzee have that's big and round? Kind of like me. <laughs> what's, what's going on there? A belly, has a big round belly, right? Maybe the chimpanzee's drinking too much beer. That makes a big, no, I'm just kidding, a big round belly, okay? Okay, next one. Small sticks, very small sticks we can see here. They're very small, very thin. Remember what we talked about? What is the same word for a small stick? That's right here, twig. A twig is a small stick, okay. Okay, welcome back. We're going to go over the reading now. The reading is titled Smart as a Chimp, right? And we're going to read a passage about this subject. Now, it's interesting to notice that the reading starts off with a riddle. A riddle. R-I-D-D-L-E. A riddle. What is a riddle? A riddle is when I ask you a question and then I give you some clues about what it is. For example, guess what animal I'm thinking of. Guess what animal I'm thinking of. You don't know, it's a riddle. So I'm gonna give you some clues. I'm gonna give you some clues. Clue is information that helps you solve the riddle. The riddle is like a puzzle. I give you information, you try to Think of the answer, solve the puzzle. So, guess what animal I'm thinking of. Now, of course, I could be thinking about an elephant. I could be thinking about a dog. You don't know, so I need to give you some clues. My clues are, this animal likes to laugh and tickle its friends. Hmm, there's two clues right there. The animal likes to laugh and it likes to tickle its friends. There's two clues. One more clue. It also uses tools to find food. That's another clue. So this animal can use tools to find food? That's unusual. Elephants don't. Well, elephants might use tools to find food. That's true. Uh, but that's one of the clues of this animal. When this animal is sick, it takes medicine to feel better. That's interesting. Now. All of these clues, how many clues are there? We've got this clue, one, it likes to laugh. We got another clue here, tickle its friends. Another clue here, number three, it also uses tools to find food. When this animal is sick, it takes medicine to feel better. We have four different clues here. It likes to laugh, it tickles its friends, it uses tools to find food, it takes medicine to feel better. Sounds like a person, but no, 
I'm not thinking of people. So I'm not thinking of a person. Because you see these clues and you think, that sounds like a person. People laugh. People tickle their friends. People use tools to find food. When they're sick, they, we take medicine to feel better. That's what people do. Dogs don't do that, right? Rabbits don't do that. Fish don't do that. People do. But it's not people. No, I'm not thinking of people. The answer is here. I'm thinking of a chimpanzee. The answer is chimpanzee. So this riddle, the answer is chimpanzee. You gave somebody, this is the riddle, what am I thinking of? Then you give clues down to here, and then you give the answer. And that's what this reading passage is doing. Let's continue. Because it's kind of interesting that chimpanzees can do all of those things. So that's what this reading passage is about. How can chimpanzees do all of these things? How can they tickle their friends? Right? How can they laugh? It's unusual for an animal to laugh. How can chimpanzees use tools to find food? How can they do it? They can because they're intelligent animals. They are intelligent animals. They are smart animals. Chimpanzees like to eat ants, but their arms are too big to reach inside the ant's nest. Okay, so what we've got here is we got this statement. They can, they can because they're intelligent animals. So this statement says chimpanzees are intelligent. Now from here down, we see an example that supports this uh, observation or this statement. Okay, this is an example that supports. It's just the beginning of the example. We have to see the next slide. But this is the part of the example. Chimpanzees like to eat ants, but they can't, you know, they can't put their arms inside the ants' nest because their arms are too big. So, so, what they do is find thin sticks or twigs. Chimpanzees put the twig inside the nest. Ants cling to it. When the chimpanzee pulls the stick out, there are many yummy ants to eat. Okay, so that's all part of the example that supports uh, the fact that chimpanzees are intelligent. Chimpanzees, their arms are too big. They can't fit them inside the ant nest, but they like to eat ants. So what do they do? They find a twig, a small stick, and then they put the twig inside the nest because the twig is a lot smaller than their arm. So they put the twig inside the nest. Ants bite the twig, so they cling to it, right? Or they climb on the twig. When the chimpanzee pulls the twig out, right, there's a whole bunch of ants on the twig. Because, you know, the chimpanzee puts the twig in the nest, the ants attack it. It's like, what is this thing coming in our home? So the ants cling to it. Chimpanzee pulls it out. Mmm, it's a good snack. <laughs> okay, yuck. For me, it's yuck. Chimpanzees, that's like, that's like uh, a snack food, right? That's their snack. Okay, they like it. There are many yummy ants. Ah, mashita. Nom, 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 nom. Right? Uh, they like to eat those ants. Okay. Here's another example. So that was one example. Here's another example. The second example of how chimpanzees are smart. It starts here. Chimpanzees like to eat nuts, too. But opening a nut is not easy. So this is the second example. One, we heard about how chimpanzees can eat ants easily. The second example, we're going to hear about how chimpanzees can open a nut. Because you remember, a nut has a hard shell on the outside. How do you get the food inside the shell? How do they do it? Right? That's just what I asked. How do chimpanzees eat nuts? They use rocks. They hit the nut with a rock until it cracks open. Chimpanzees are careful when they crack nuts. They try not to hit the nut too hard. So this explains another way that chimpanzees are intelligent, by using tools to get food, right? In this case, they're using rocks to open the nut. 
They hit the nut with the rock, right, to break the shell until the shell cracks open. But you got to be careful. They are careful. They think about it. They don't just go smack, smack and not think about it. They, they're smart. They know not to hit the nut too hard. Hit the nut just hard enough so the shell cracks open. Be careful. When they crack nuts, don't hit it too hard. So, just like us, chimpanzees get sick sometimes. Okay, so this is changing the subject a little bit. Before we saw that chimpanzees uh, can use tools to get food that shows how smart they are. Now we see a little bit of a different example. This example has to do with when chimpanzees get sick. Just like us, chimpanzees get sick sometimes. In the forest, there are plants that have medicine inside. Chimpanzees eat these plants when they have a stomach ache. They feel better right away. Wow, that's very interesting. So just like us, you know, chimpanzees are similar to us. We get sick, chimpanzees get sick sometimes. Well, in the forest, you know, many plants have medicine. That's actually human beings, you know, when we get our medicine, our medicine was usually from certain plants, right? Then we just concentrate that medicine. We've changed the, the amount of the medicine. We, we put it into pills and we put it into liquid that we drink, but it comes from plants. That's where it came from originally. So the plants have medicine inside. Chimpanzees know, they're smart. They know which plants to eat when they have a stomach ache. They feel better right away after they eat the plants because the plant is medicine for them. Very interesting. So how do chimpanzees know which plants have medicine in them? How do they know? We're not sure. But because of chimpanzees, now we use these plants to make medicine too. Very interesting. What this passage is telling us is that chimpanzees taught human beings which plants to use for stomach aches or when you're sick, right? So we don't know. We're not sure how chimpanzees know which plant is the best one to use. We have to do an experiment. We have to uh, figure that out, right? But because of they know this, because chimpanzees know this, we can learn from chimpanzees. Isn't that interesting? Human beings who are really, really smart can learn from chimpanzees about which plants to use. Okay, chimpanzees show a lot of emotions like we do. So now we're changing subject a little bit. Now we're talking about emotions. They hug each other, wrestle for fun, and even laugh. Sometimes they even rub each other's bellies. Chimpanzees can be very silly. Okay, so this part here is just talking about how chimpanzees show emotions. And it gives several examples about how chimpanzees can show emotions. What are they? Here's one example. They hug each other. They show their love. Here's another one. Two, they wrestle for fun. So they play for, with each other. When you're young, maybe you wrestle your brother or if your sister doesn't yell at you, you might wrestle your sister, uh, you know, for fun because you're playing. That's what kids do. So that's the next one. And even laugh. Chimpanzees laugh. Wow, that's the third example of how chimpanzees show emotion. And sometimes they even rub each other's bellies. So they show emotion. This is my father or mother. This is my brother or sister and they will, or my friend. And they'll rub the bellies because that makes you feel good. So it's showing love to somebody else too. So chimpanzees can be very silly. They can also, that's another way that they show emotion. They can act silly. So other chimpanzees may laugh or they may laugh because they act silly. Of course, People don't act silly, do they? You've never seen me act silly, <laughs> right? But of course, we show emotion when we act silly. So this passage is mostly about how chimpanzees can show emotions. We have one, two, three, four, five different examples or ways that chimpanzees use 
to show emotion. So we have this final sentence here, which is a concluding sentence. Uh, maybe these furry animals aren't so different from us after all. Okay, so that's kind of like a conclusion sentence because chimpanzees look like people, right? They have heads and faces that are similar to people. They walk on two legs like people do. They have arms with hands and thumbs and fingers like people do. And in fact, you know, chimpanzees and humans aren't so different really. We're cousins, right? People didn't evolve from chimpanzees, but people and chimpanzees evolved from the same ancestor. So humans and chimpanzees are cousins, so they're not so different from us. Okay? Okay, the next one is, uh, let's do the comprehension uh, questions. This story is about what? What is this story about? Is it about chimpanzees tickling, laughing, or using tools? Well, of course, the entire passage was about talking about different uh, aspects or characteristics of chimpanzees, right? Not tickling. Tickling was just a small part. It said chimpanzees tickle, chimpanzees laugh, and chimpanzees use tools. So all of these things have to do with chimpanzees. The big subject of this passage is A, chimpanzees. So this story is about chimpanzees. Okay, number two. Chimpanzees use twigs to do what? Beep, beep. Okay. A, scratch their backs. So they use twigs to scratch their backs? No, nope, the passage didn't say that. Chimpanzees use twigs to find water. How do you use a twig to find water? You, maybe you poke it in the ground and see if there's water there, but the passage didn't say that. Chimpanzees use twigs to reach inside birds' nests. Maybe the bird's nest is up high, but why would you use a little twig? You should use a stick. But anyway, the passage didn't say anything about bird's nests, so that's not right. Chimpanzees use twigs to reach inside ants' nests. Ah, that's what the passage said, right? That's the right answer. The passage said that chimpanzees are smart. One way they're smart is they use twigs to put inside the ant's nest to pull out all the ants that cling to the twig. So chimpanzees use twigs to reach inside ants nests. Okay, next one, number three. Chimpanzees use beep to crack open nuts. Okay, so another tool that chimpanzees use to get the food inside the nut, what do they use? Do they use rocks, twigs, medicine, or powerful muscles? Of course, you remember from the reading, they were saying that chimpanzees use rocks. That's the right answer. They use twigs to get ants. They use medicine to make them feel better if they have a stomach ache. And the passage didn't say anything about the strength of the chimpanzees. So powerful muscles was not mentioned. The answer is rocks. Chimpanzees use rocks to crack open nuts. And remember, they know, they're smart. They crack open the nuts, not too hard, but just enough to crack the shell and get the food. Interesting. Number four, because of chimpanzees, we know beep, we know what? We know how to be silly? No, the passage didn't uh, say that chimpanzees taught humans how to be silly. That's silly. <laughs> B, which plants to use for medicine? Aha, uh -huh. that was mentioned in the passage. Because the passage said chimpanzees know which plants to eat when they have a stomachache. We don't know how the chimpanzees know that, but we can follow the chimpanzees. We can follow their example. Say, oh, the chimpanzee ate that plant. That plant has medicine. Now we know that plant has medicine. We'll use the same plant. So that's the right answer. Let's look at C and D for practice. Because of chimpanzees, we know how to eat ants with a stick. The passage didn't say that humans learned how to eat ants with a stick. By the way, blah, that's yuck you wah, right? <laughs> So that's not the right answer. D, which bananas taste the best? 
The passage didn't say anything about bananas, so that's not right either. Of course, we know it's B. Because of chimpanzees, we know which plants to use for medicine. That's the answer. Okay, let's summarize here. Here we have a good picture of chimpanzees or chimps. We can call them chimps for short. Uh, they do look tough, don't they? Yeah, they look pretty mean. <laughs> okay, um, what can we say about chimpanzees? Chimpanzees use tools to find food. That's an example of how smart or intelligent they are. Right? They can figure things out. They use tools to find food. What's something else we learned about chimpanzees? Chimpanzees take medicine to feel better. That's very interesting. So chimpanzees take medicine. Remember, take, not eat, right? but take. They take medicine to feel better. And finally, chimpanzees show a lot of emotions like we do. They can laugh. They tickle each other, right? They wrestle for fun. They hug each other, right? So chimpanzees show a lot of emotions like we do. And it's very amazing, uh, of course, that chimpanzees are very similar to, we, to human beings and, of course, many other monkeys that are, we are actually cousins of all these different animals. So, of course, chimpanzees are very smart. They're cousins to the smartest animal on Earth, which is us, okay? So, I hope you've learned a lot in this lesson. We'll see you again next time. Take care.